We are at the end of 2023, which also marks the first year of the existence of the Red Meat Industry Services, or RMIS. It has been a really tough or hectic, but also a very good year for the Red Meat in South Africa. We've established an organization that looks after the service delivery of the entire value chain, primary value chain, from the primary producer up until the abattoir. And it has gone exceptionally well. We had the opportunity to put together a magnificent team that uh, has came, come together to engage on specific services to be delivered to the industry. Uh, we would like to thank each and every role player that assisted, assisted us in putting this organization together, firstly, and secondly, also each and every consumer that uh, made use of our products and are still using red meat uh, as a first choice of animal protein in South Africa. Thank you very much and we look forward to 2024 working together as in unity and as a grouping within the livestock sector and specifically the red meat sector in South Africa, uh, focusing on service delivery and ensuring that uh, whatever has to be done needs to be done to not only have a healthy animal, but also healthy food on our plates. Although 2023 and looking forward to 2024 has been a good year, we obviously also had some challenges, um, call it uh, risks that we saw, but uh, challenges going forward. Now, I think the first challenge that we have going forward uh, has to do with leadership. We've got the leadership within South Africa, but we identified a specific risk at this stage. If leadership do not stand up, if leadership do not execute on the plans, boldly execute on the plans that has been put on the table. We've got plans like the Agricultural and Agro-Processing Master Plan. We've got the National Development Plan, and that's not only leadership within the agricultural fraternity, but in South Africa. So the first risk or problem or issue that we've identified going into 2024 is leadership, not committing, standing up and doing what needs to be done, walking in front and ensuring that we've got a safer, better product, but also a safer and better South Africa for all. This, the second challenge or risk that we have identified is missing the mark. So we know what we have to do, but we, in the Greek, they call it hamartia. And that's when you aim with, a, with an arrow and a bow and you miss the mark, you've hamartia. And we have to ensure that we serve South Africa uh, as an industry. And we shouldn't miss the mark. Sometimes, and, and usually within the industry or private sector, we are very much in, uh, inwardly focused and we look at ourselves and we look at business. But we see a massive risk going into 2024 if we're only going to focus on our own business, our own pockets, and the, our own ways of doing it. We have to, at some stage, put South Africa first and ensure that South Africa is also striving. So the second risk that we've identified is missing the mark. Um, we need to always remember where we come from. And the history is, report, and is, is very important. However, we cannot be fixed on the history and not look forward. So missing the mark would mean that we understand the history, but look forward to what needs to be done to ensure that we've got an inclusive South Africa that ensures that there's opportunities for everybody. The third and final risk that we've identified is kicking the ball back to government or thinking that government has to do everything for us. Government is an enabler of industry or private sector. Now, it's very important, specifically in agriculture, that we keep the ball and give answers or solutions specifically to government. We understand that government has got a lot of red tape and is the authority with regards to certain things that needs to be done. However, we as industry have got the opportunity to ensure that the proposals, the projects, the plans be implemented. So from an industry perspective, going into 2024, we have to, as industry and as private sector, put the plans on the table and ensure that it's executable, not only by government, but together as a team, we can 
execute plans to the betterment of the entire industry, but also again for South Africa. The second part of this is, is obviously opportunities. What are the opportunities that we have identified going into 2024? A growing population. Um, we understand that our world global population is growing rapidly and we need to and we are consuming animal protein. So we see that as and from a South African perspective as a massive opportunity. We need to relook the way that we sell our product within South Africa and that creates an opportunity for us to reimagine uh, the way that we sell our product and what we sell. So as a farming community or an agricultural community from the primary producer up until the abattoir, it's important for us to think out of the box, um, think differently and ensure that our product is not only consumed within South Africa, but also outside the borders of South Africa. And we need standards for that. So the focus is how do we commit to international standards with regards to our animals and with regards to our product. But that is a massive opportunity for our industry. The second opportunity are the plans that are already written. I previously referred to the AAMP, Agricultural and Agro Processing Master Plan, the National Development Plan, and thirdly, the Red Meat Strategy 2030, which we've done over the past three years. And it all aims to betterment of the entire industry, work towards a better agriculture, but we need robust implementation. And that is a massive opportunity which we've seen. Uh, we are seeing at this stage to get the emergent or the small scale farmers involved, commercial farmers involved in ensuring and looking forward to exporting or increase our exports from 4% of our product to 20%, alleviating not only the pressure that is created internally by the oversupply of our product, but also looking for external markets, uh, selling our product, our very high standard product to the entire world. And that is a immense opportunity which we need to um, take uh, hold of going into 2024 and capitalize on that. The third and final opportunity is youth and women. A lot has been said about youth and women in the past years and obviously there's a lot of focus on it. But what we've seen is not only from a, a participation within agriculture, but also from a consumer perspective. Youth and women are the future. Uh, what we've also seen is uh, we're looking at uh, animal health technicians, veterinarians, technology. How do we incorporate the youth, the youth, the youth's use of technology and that, the way they look at the future? We have to utilize that to the betterment uh, of our industry. But we also look at alternative ways of selling our product. And youth and women are the specific target market which we need to look at. Uh, one of the biggest things that we've been looking at is the utilization of air fryers, for example. Uh, I'm a massive driver of looking at smaller portions, different portions, um, but we have to look to cater to our youth and women. And they are uh, one of the biggest buyers of our products and the biggest contingent of people, consumers that we can influence going into 2024. Massive opportunity and uh, we have to focus on those two groups uh, going into our next year, but also going into the next four years and maybe also the decade that is in front of us. The Red Meat Industry Services do not work alone and we've got 13 projects identified. Uh, which will be the service delivery back to the industry with the statutory money. The first and foremost and the most important service or project that we've identified is traceability. And I don't think a lot needs to be said about traceability, but a lot of the focus in 2024 will be on traceability since that will form the backbone of a lot and actually everything that we do. The second one is small scale farmer development. Uh, that is an agreement or a contract that we have with land development and um, looking at the uh, upliftment of small scale farmers throughout South Africa. The second one is inclusive growth and um, that is amongst other things look at training of small scale farmers and at this stage we also look at training of commercial farmers and their, their employees. The third one is mobile units uh, that is to assist uh, the dip tanks or at the dip tanks 
uh, looking to assist the small scale farmers with regards to the health of the animals and uh, collecting data that will also go into the traceability system. Research and development forms uh, one of the projects and is very important. Then industry animal health recording system. At this stage, we need to collect a lot of data with regards to what's happening. And we understand that there's already systems in place and uh, we need to continue the passive surveillance that is currently going on and ensure that we've got this information uh, to be utilized to the advancement of our industry. Then we're looking at creating a market for small scale farmers in the foot and mouth disease area uh, in Mpumalanga, Limpopo and specifically starting off at KZN. Um, after that we've got uh, red meat certification and that is to create a standard within South Africa with regards to red meat. We would like to export red meat under a standard called certified South African red meat. Again I'm saying we cannot do this alone and we're utilizing uh, the Red Meat Producers Organization to assist us specifically with reference to the work that has to be done from primary producer side and ensuring that we've got a program that adheres to ISO standards and can be audited on farm level. Then we've got the animal theft recording system uh, as another project where the Red Meat Producers Organization is already assisting us as well. They've got systems in place and we're engaging them uh, as a service provider, a third party service provider to ensure that we've got a workable plan on the table by the end of 2024 that can be implemented to ensure that we address the massive risk with regards to stock theft in South Africa. Producer communication, uh, communication we have seen is very important and one of the biggest uh, factors lacking within the agricultural industry. Uh, this is also a project or a program that is run by the Red Meat Producers Organization to be reporting back into the Red Meat Industry Services with regards to um, the communication to all farmers, uh, primary farmers within South Africa. Then we've got consumer communication and I hope you've seen Beef and Lamb South Africa relaunching, looking at specifically in engaging with consumers in South Africa. Uh, that will be done on the basis of influencers, but very, very important. We're also engaging with schools with on, on, on tertiary um, and secondary level to ensure that we start training farmers within South Africa. Uh, a massive breakthrough for uh, us in the red meat industry and specifically RMIS to be able to engage with the Department of Education. Then lastly, beef grading. Uh, beef grading is one of the most important aspects or projects that we need to attend to. At this stage, it's very important, but not urgent, uh, but it will receive attention uh, throughout, the, throughout the year and throughout the four years, three years remaining within this current statutory period. So the RMIS cannot operate alone. Um, we will look at further service providers, service delivery to ensure that we deliver not only to the, to the primary producer, but also at the back end uh, to the consumer, the best quality product uh, we can deliver within the scope of our responsibilities.